So golf swing wise, a couple things come to my mind about what you've been working on recently. Yeah. I think about, you know, I, I think about Tyler's got long arms. He's starting to really get tall we got, this we got way. Long arms and short legs. So, <laughs> so, so we're, I'm always trying to keep his arms more connected to his body's turn, you know, and that's what I'm doing with every single one of my golfers. But my arms love to just rise to the top. Because they just get up there. If my elbow gets up at the top then I have to manipulate it on the downswing and you know and it's only a short amount of time going from here to here yeah. and if I have to flip my hands or do something weird with my body turn it's, it's not going to be consistent especially under pressure. We're so, just trying to get this position to where I always say like we're like we're giving blood in that setup we're shaking hands with somebody down the line and then we're simply holding the tray at the top and all that's doing is keeping the hands more in front of his body center. Now with Tyler it's even more important with those long arms that we keep his hands connected to his body or at least attempt to on every swing. That keeps his hand path consistent to the direction the body needs to rotate. Now what's important to understand about that is if my hands climb to the top this way, now that's the start of doing things to have to that's shallow. Good there. That's to have, <laughs> well I mean that's the start of having to do things, yeah. right? To shallow the club the wrong way. Yeah. This guy is really good at charging through the golf ball and covering it and putting in, you, you guys will see, he moves through it as well as anybody. He hits it hard, you guys. It goes really far, his ball speed's incredible. Um, but it's even more important for us with these long arms to keep him connected to the body so that when he changes directions, they're moving with his body, which can keep him continuously rotating. But more importantly also, it, it just having them on the proper plane as you're gonna, as we're probably gonna be working on again today to yeah. make sure that it neutralizes that ball flight so the cuts are tiny and the draws are tiny. Okay, cool. The one thing I look for is, you know, yes, he's talking about the setup. It's always been a habit. Tyler's always been real low with the hands in here. But, you know, we try to get him up as long as he's in good posture, which he is. I feel good about the fact that he's working on trying to get his hands a little bit away from his body. But the takeaway is significantly better Tyler typically gets his hands out a little bit and the club will roll in. So what do you, what do you need? It's more of the hands in, club out hands feeling. Club when out. you watch what Tyler does when he does this, look at how, go back again, stop right here, right there. See how the butt of the club is still pointed to the inside of his left leg mm -hmm. and the club's at about a 45 degree angle. Keep the club there, Tyler. So watch, if I were to grab this alignment rod, put it from heel to toe, Parallel. You see how it's on that line. Now that's my mentor always told me, Todd Stones, just you know, get that club hinging in this direction. Now what that does, what I love about it, is it keeps this wrist nice and flat. Show him this again. There's that direction, Parallel so it's towards alignment. the camera. And what's funny is then, then switch the camera back around down the line of his feet now. When his body keeps turning, guess what happens? It goes down the line, it goes up the forearm, and then it goes right down the line at the top. The golfer who works on keeping the club outside, what happens a lot of times? They feel like they're then going to wipe across it and get steep. A lot of people are watching this going, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happens to me. You know why? Because the golfer who tries to get outside the wrong way, they pick up the club, pick up the club, and guess what? They get it behind their body's rotation, and that's the problem. So here's what we need to do. For a guy who we're looking at getting shallower and not steeper, we want to make sure that as we set that club, it's really staying connected to your chest, your hands are. So when you get up there, everything's looking at each other because then it can come down looking at each other. If we pick it up at all past our chest, arms are behind us, body starts rotating without the arms, wiping it right all day. Yeah. So here's what I want you to do. You get in here. I actually set those alignment rods up pretty nicely. Put your hands on the red line. Put your club head on top of that yellow line. And all I'm doing is I'm putting them in the ground to help Tyler understand this personal visual that I've always had of if I set up with my hands on the line of the red line, the exaggerated feel for somebody who takes their hands outside and moves the club inside, so somebody who does this a little bit, which Tyler does to some small degree, the opposite would be to keep the hands on the red line with the club staying on the yellow line. And you can see that really, even though it's exaggerated, helps the feeling of my wrist keep the club at that 45 degree angle, which is just a great feeling for somebody who's gone the opposite direction. Hop in there and let me see how you do it. Hands directly on this line. So exactly. There you go. Look at that. See how he sets it right up that plane? And his job today is to make sure he syncs it up with his body's turn. See, look at that. I, I <laughs> yes, he's Another very simple way of doing this. We can set it up 
in between the ball and his feet on the line of the shaft, boom. Go back here to where it doesn't even impede with the swing. But I can just see and he can see it out of the peripheral vision and he's gonna feel like his hands stay on this side while his club head stays on top of it on this side. All right, TK, you got this, buddy. Do a little stop go for me in the beginning there where you give it the little Rory. Stop at one. Yeah, stop at checkpoint one. So it's just about, just a little out in front of the hands. Let's get used to what it's like to turn to the top from there. There it is. So he's gonna hit checkpoint one. He's gonna stop it. He's gonna guarantee it's correct. So here we go, let's see it. There it is. Good turn. Yeah, that's real nice right there. Why does the club need to set inside the ball? Well, here's why. When I do that properly, it means the golf club is set in front of my hands and in front of my body. Now, if I were to be behind my hands like this, and I turn at you guys, that small degree behind my hands, I'm gonna have to correct that in my swing. You know, especially then when I set it back here, well, look how far that club is now behind me. I have to make up for that in the swing. So it's really important when we're in here that we work hard to understand checkpoint one is checkpoint one for a reason. Path of the least amount of manipulation if I rotate. If I hit checkpoint one and I keep going, there's the set position right up the right forearm. Path of the least amount of manipulation if I keep, to, keep rotating. Great angle of attack right down the line, square club face longer. Yeah. Mm. Dude. Money. Yeah. Compress you very much. Like, check this out. Like, look at the difference in this takeaway right here. Love this angle. Look at the, look at the shaft and how it's, we have the alignment. Uh, it's a little alignment. bit farther away from me. Yeah. But watch this, this is great. Look at the club now. Look at this guy, keep it out in front of his hands. Oh. Up the forearm, oh, thank you. Look at this guy. Oh, that's right down the line right there. Love it. The most important thing for you is going to be making sure to understand what we talked about. And I, knew, I know you know this. Don't be the guy who tries to get the hands out to get the club out. Don't be the guy who tries to lift up to get the club out. Keep it with your chest. Keep the hands moving right up the proper path. That white, that alignment rod is going to help you right there, that yellow one. Oh gosh, dude, that's just so pure. From Piner's number two, let's do a full circle on that. We got every hole at number two, so. Putter boy in every hole in two. And then go back though, because I love the logo in the back. Yeah, look at number two. Isn't that awesome? Nine holes on one side, nine holes on the other. Pity's back there, and he's just talking about how sweet that belt is.